Welcome to another broadcast of Restoring Your Life, because it's all about restoring your life, right, my friend, Carol? Yes. yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, what are we going to be talking about today? Oh, we're going to be talking about friendship, and that's something worth restoring, isn't it, Linda? Yes, it friendship. Yes, it is. Yes. So let's open up with prayer. You want to open up with prayer for us, please? Yes. Yes, I will. Ooh, dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, thank you for bringing Sister Linda and I into the homes of listeners that are that are dealing with friendship issues. So we pray that this show today would be an eye opener for those that are looking for answers. We love you and we praise you and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Because we had issues. We yes. still have friend issues. Um, mm -hmm. But the neat part is there's scriptures that helps us deal with these kinds of friend issues. Right? Mm, that's right. Um, so I want to just open up with one of the scriptures and I really oh, okay. think uh, that it'll get us going. Um, okay. It's in uh, Mark 5 19. Okay. Mark 5 19. Mark 5, Mark 5 19. Okay. So let me preface it with this. So uh, okay. Jesus, Jesus healed this guy. Okay. Okay. Jesus healed this guy. And, and this guy, he said, um, well, you know, wow, you did such a good job, Jesus. I want to follow you. Can I just kind of join with these guys, the disciples? And, and, and Jesus said, no, I want you to go home and tell your friends. Ooh, so that's what this yes. says. It says, and, and okay. it's in red letters. It says it right here. He says, yeah. Jesus said not to do that, but he said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and had compassion on you. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, because sometimes, I don't know if you've ever known this, but there's been ministers that have been really powerful in people's lives. And what do they mm -hmm. want? They want to pick up, move to that person's ministry location and be a part of their ministry. And God's saying, no, no, don't pack up. We need you where you're at. There's a reason you're living there. I put you there for a reason and I need you to be there. Bring back what you gleaned and tell your friends. That's good. That's good. I like that. And and I like how Jesus said, he said, when you go back and tell your friends, he said, tell them what the Lord has done. You know, and, and I tell you, who don't want to tell what the Lord has done? And who better yet to tell it to than your friends that are like minded because they will get it. They will understand, you know, what the Lord has done. Wow. Well, we'll Good believe them too, because I believe yes. my friends. For example, yes. for example, okay, we got a great friend story. My okay. friend, my friend, Minister Love, her birthday was just a couple of days ago. And I I had to trick her because it was a surprise birthday party. And mm -hmm. so I had to tell a couple of fibs to get her into the position to be able to walk into this place and not know nothing. Because, you know. Uh, you know, when do you lie, right? Well, these are the kinds of things you gotta lie on, but the truth is friends. in the end. Well, so here's what she did. She trusted me because um, I was in the car and I said, hey, we just gotta stop here for a minute and pick something up and I need you to help me carry something because it's heavy. Well, little does she know all the people were waiting for her in this room, but I didn't want her to know it but I did want to bring her in. So I was trying to figure out a way to get her in there. But my problem was I took my purse with me. She goes, uh, she was thinking later, she told me, she goes, okay, so we're going to go in and pick something up and bring it back. But you took your purse in. Isn't it going to be hard to carry this, whatever with your purse? You know, and you just kind of reasoned it out and you go, well, if she's bringing her purse in, I'm going to bring my purse in. So you grabbed your purse, right? And, and you go I, in I and, and, and you, you said to me later, you go, because I trusted you. Whatever yeah. it was that you were doing, I simply trusted you because you right. know I love you. See? Yes. You you trust people who you know loves you. That's right. That is so true. That and it comes automatic. You 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 it, there's no 
in between. It's just some. It's just automatic because you you've been with that friend. You know that friend, and like you said, you trust them. It reminds me of Jonathan and David. That kind of friendship that they had. They trusted one another. Where Jonathan went to the point where he even gave uh uh, uh David what he gave David what his um clothing or something. He gave David something to show his friendship in the bible there yeah well you know it's exactly what the lord says he says that you're my friend he says mm -hmm. if, you're my, if you're my friend you will keep my commandments why because, exactly because because if i keep if if i do what he tells me to do it's because i'm trusting him and that he mm -hmm. loves me so i'm gonna do yeah. it like you did you just well okay she took her person i guess i'll take my person too so right. how yeah. are we truly trusting god because That'll show our friendship to God. Exactly. Exactly. That is so true. That is so true. And then to be able, you know, just to add on to what you were sharing with the celebration there, and to be able to open those doors and not only have you to be right there with me to walk in as a dear, dear friend, but to open up and see all the other friends. It was talk about friendship man that was friendship to see everyone there you know and, it, it was beautiful you know the other thing too if you think about it every friend has a different relationship with you oh that's right exactly exactly yes yes so for example, and you can tell in the gifts and you can tell in the gifts that that was given you can tell what the what friend know you and they got everything exactly perfect there was nothing that i did not like nothing because that's what a friend does they know you they you know they hang around you they know your likes and dislikes and you know that's exactly what god says he says he says i want you to know me if you knew me you would mm -hmm. know how much i love you. you would know that this is why this is happening you would know right. that i'm working it out and behind the scenes so don't be so upset and, and stressed out you you exactly. know if you knew me you wouldn't worry that's right that's right you're so, so right so I, i'm i'm helping somebody here we're helping somebody here yes we if are you that's knew right. god you wouldn't have any anxiety and stress that's right exactly well, matter of fact you know, I, was, I was looking up that word anxiety in the scriptures it's not okay. in james version it's only in the niv and other versions the word anxiety is really? not in the word anxiety wow. in the new in the king james version is be careful for nothing the no don't be full of care so yes. it distorts that meaning of don't be anxious well hey that's like telling somebody to you know, to not eat food because people, oh. people are going to get anxious because it's a response to something. It's a response. Yes. It's a response. Yes. Okay. So we respond in two ways, either in faith okay. or in fear. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm, that's you, good. Faith you, wherever, or fear. wherever you're at, no matter what's coming our way. And, and these friends that we're talking about, I kind of got on a, a rabbit trail there, but we're talking about friendships is that, um, uh, you know, they're all in a different place. Like say, so, so for example, um, you're my friend and I can talk to you about anything and I don't feel condemned. I don't worry about exactly. po posting it anywhere, telling anybody, but then there's other friends. Exactly. I know I cannot tell anything because it's going to mm -hmm. end up in somebody else's ear, which I just found out this week. I Ooh. said something to somebody, I said, and please keep it to yourself. Last night, this other lady says, hey, blah, blah, blah. And she just told me, blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, see, oh. sometimes sometimes we have to test the waters to see who we can truly trust. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. That is so we, so have different, we have different people in our lives. So all if you look at all those friends that came, you know, that greeted you, some of yes. them are new. Some of them are, are older friends. Some of them you've known for a long yes. time. Some of them uh believe the way you do some of them kind of do but not really so you've got a variety of friends yeah and acquaintances mm -hmm. some of our acquaintances and that's that that's that 
the five circles, it's like a circle. You have the little inner circle of people. You've got the next circle, which is, oh, you could tell them a lot, but not as much deep things as you could the inner circle. Uh -huh. And then the next one is more like acquainted. And another one is kind of like fly by night people, you know? Uh, <laughs> so you know who they are. So you know how exactly. to have a relationship. That's why Paul says, I am all things to all men. So he knew, he knew. Oh, these I love people. that. Yeah. I love that. You know, another thing, what I love about this word friendship that you chose so appropriately for this show today. When I look at the word friendship, you know, at the end is a ship. And if you're on a ship out in the ocean, I mean, out in the ocean, not on a river, not on a lake, but if you're out there on this big old ocean of water on this ship, <laughs> isn't it good to have friends? Isn't it good to know that Hey, that uh, whatever the situation may be, we're going to go through this together. We're going to get from the other side. You know, if there is a storm that comes up, don't, it's good to know you got some friends on that ship that's going to be with you and weather that storm. And that's how I see you and I and others. We're on this big old love boat ship. And we, and we do go through some storms. And although we may be leaders in the body of Christ, it doesn't exempt us from the storms that come upon the ships. But it sure does help when you got friends. The captain is your friend. The you know everybody that's part of the ship is your friend. Exactly. I love that. That is. I never saw that before. So we're going to talk now about friends that have betrayed us. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I think we have a couple of examples, but I want to yes. read Psalm fifty-five, okay, eleven and twelve. So let's take a look at Psalm fifty-five. Actually. 12 and 13 and 14, 12, 13 and 14. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it him that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. In other words, if I didn't know, you know, if this person didn't like me, I would know how to handle it. But this person was my friend, okay? And right. If, but if you, but it was you, a man my equal, my guide, even a mentor, a friend, an acquaintance. Uh -huh. And we took yeah. counsel together and walked yeah. into the house of the Lord. In other words, we went to church together. We ministered uh, yeah. together. We worshiped together. And yet yeah. you turned on turned me. Turned on me. Mm. So now you have, you have a story about a lady that came back into your life. Remember? You yes. That yes. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. I had this friend and, and, um, she became my best friend over a seven year period, very close. And just like you said, this was one of those friends where you can tell everything to, you know, that, you know, that it's going to be safe and everything. And so when this friend ended, well, let's say we had a two part relationship. What, the part of the relationship was we had a ministry. You know, she was in the ministry work with me, a student. And then we had our best friend friendship so she ended the ministry part well when that ended it changed the whole dynamic of the friendship of the of the other part too so we lost contact for two years didn't lose contact she just didn't want to come back into my life you know for two years but guess what I never hated her, never talked bad of her, always said spoke good of her, you know, and come come to find out she I get a text on Mother's Day and uh, I'm like, who is this, you know? And so I text back, I said, thank you for the beautiful text. I said, but forgive me, who are you? And it was this, this lady, this friend that had been severed two years ago. So it was amazing how when we do wait, and don't let anger come about when you do lose that friendship. Don't let anger take over. Just wait. Just wait because they'll come back. Time will, they'll come back in time. And sure enough, she did. So it's, it's being uh, reconciled in its own way. So, yeah. And so yeah. I had the same thing. I had a woman in my life for five years. We ministered together. She sold my mm -hmm. book for me. She traveled with me. I mean, I would put the bill and, and I would have her do stuff with me. I mean, we did a lot together. We, it was so mm -hmm. beautiful. And one morning at four o'clock in the morning, I get a text. Do not text me anymore. Do not call me. I don't want to speak to you ever again. And I, I go, Oh my goodness. Okay. So am, am I reading this right? <laughs> I mean, right. what is this? So come to find out. I sent a note. I told you, do not text me. 
Okay. Well, I, I was confused and I thought, okay, so um, I, I just kind of said, Lord, obviously it's seasonal. Okay. So obviously you're removing her out of my life for a reason. And I took it that way. I said, Lord, and I called you. Remember I called yes, you. you I did. said, yeah. pray with me because if I did something horribly wrong, I want to know so I can make it right. Yeah. But she never would respond. She wouldn't tell me what I had done wrong. So about mm -hmm. a month later, um, she finally wrote a note and said, okay, this is what happened. And everything was a complaint. It wasn't, none of it, half of it wasn't even true. And if it was, it was just in what she thought it was. So I just said, uh, let her speak her mind. I said, okay, I understand. Um, all right, well, okay. And you know, we never spoke for two years. Well, actually a year, it was a year because um, at about Christmas time, this last time, um, I, 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 I thought, you know what, I'm cleaning my house. I came across this little something that I was going to give her. I told her, I, I promised it to her. I'm going to mail it. So I just mailed it. I just said for you, I didn't put a note. I didn't want to mess with her life. I just said, this is for you. I promised you this item. Right. So then I get a phone call and she says, hi, pastor Linda. I, I want to talk to you. And it was so beautiful. And she said, mm -hmm. why don't we just start over? I said, okay, let's do it. I didn't even have to go into the reason. I didn't have to ask her, well, why did you do it? I didn't even go there because when you forgive somebody, exactly, it's gone. You, it's it's never like it never happened. You don't have to have exactly. someone explain to you what happened. Sometimes, right. sometimes we just have to say, you know what? Let's just forget it, cleanse it, mm -hmm. forgive each other, and that's what we yep. do. And it's brand new. It's like we're brand new friends. All that old stuff I, isn't even there anymore. Uh -huh. huh. And you know what, uh, you know what, Sister Linda, too, is that sometimes I don't even want to know because yeah. when I know more than I should want to know, that's in my memory now. And I'm going to constantly remember. I'm going to be thinking about it. So just like you just said, when reconciliation comes, forget it. Don't talk about it. Don't bring it up. Let's start a new, it's a brand new day and let the bygones be bygone. I don't need no explanation. It's all good. Cause I don't, I don't want to remember. I don't want to know. Just let's start new. Let's start new. Yeah. So, yeah. And, that's beautiful. Um, and if we can do that, that is a miracle. Yeah. That in itself is yeah. a miracle. Um, right. So some of the things that I really like, I, I pulled up a few scriptures and one was, oh, okay. um, about Abraham, okay? Abraham was a friend of God. Ooh, Abraham was a friend of God, James 2, 23. says Abraham mm -hmm. was a friend of God. Now, what made Abraham a friend of God? Yes. He believed God. He sure did, didn't he? He believed it. He believed yeah. God and that made him a friend of God. Yes. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. now- Wow. That's I awesome. mean, okay. So my husband and I have been married for a while and he's told me that I'm his best friend. Okay. And so I realized as I read, was looking at this, believed, I believe Tom, I believe everything he says to me, whether, I mean, even if it's not perfectly right, I believe him and he'll go, he'll say, I, I was joking. And I said, but I believed you. Right. <laughs> You're right. telling me the truth. You know, yes, so, yes. because that's a friend. That's a, fr a person who believes you is your friend. Is your friend. That is so true. That it, it, Linda, I like, I, I'm so glad you brought up Abraham with God. And notice that it said a friend of God. I mean, not a man. We're talking about deity, the creator, that we could not only be his child, but be his friend too. My goodness, what a friend that you have if you got God as a friend. Talk I about tell him everything. You can tell him everything. And he knows it anyway. That reminds me of that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Have it, Jesus, yes. What a friend that'll never leave you, never forsake you, that forgives you. And, 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 and what did Jesus say? If you got to forgive him, what, 77 times or something like that? Seven times 70. Yeah, 70 times 70. All yeah. day long. All day long. If and that's one thing. That's not a and, bunch yeah. of different things. That's forgiving them of that one thing over and over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a friend, isn't that it? Is a friend. That's a friend. Oh, yeah. I have a, a little, I have a little a plaque. 
And I, I don't oh, okay. know where it is. Let me see. Is it in my purse? I, I mean, oh, here it is. I have it right here. Okay. I had it. I, I've okay. had this for about, oh, 30 years now. And it says this. Right. Real friends are those who, when you've made a fool of yourself, don't feel you've done a permanent job. Ooh, I like that. So even friends, good, good friends, they're going to tell you some stuff that you may not want to hear, but it's going to be good for you. And I love to hear things that I could take correction from because I know it's coming from a dear, dear friend. And I don't mind because I don't want to keep going out there making a fool of myself and I don't have a friend <laughs> to correct me and stop me. So tell me and I won't get offended. I won't get upset. And don't get mad at your friend when they get honest with you. Don't get mad at them because I want, I want to, you know, do as to others that you want them to do unto you. You know, you tell me and I'll be able to tell you. So don't get mad. And that's iron, sharp and iron. That's oh, iron, I like sharp that. And iron. We are, we are, it says that we're sharpening our friends. Yes. So exactly. when we, when we come against and we say this, or we do this, you know, we're, we're doing this, we're sanding each other, you know, we're uh -huh. sharpening each other so that the next time we'll be sharp in that area. We'll be more clear in that area because that's what we want to do. We want to grow. We want to grow and and be the best we can be and love on the people and make new friends and right. uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly because in order to make those new friends that you just spoke about you got to learn how to be a good friend with the friend that you have you gotta be because, a friend to yourself oh that's right that's right exactly you know if i don't love myself how is some i can love somebody else and be a friend if i'm not a friend to myself well, that's wow. that scripture, Matthew 22, 38 through 40. It says to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yes. So we yes. have to be a friend. So, okay, for example, I'm in this, okay. uh, I'm in the store and I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Okay. I'm talking to myself and I'm going, okay, so do I want to get that? Or, and a lady walks by and she kind of looks at me, you're talking to yourself. And I, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, only insane people talk to themselves. But when the Lord said to me, no, you're your own best friend. And you know why I know it's okay? Because David encouraged himself. Himself. Now, he sure did. Quit? Did he just go, oh, no. He spoke out of his mouth. The scripture, okay. 3 John 1 14, it says to greet your friends by name. I know people, but I don't know everybody's name, but I can tell you that my good friends, I know their name. Exactly. Exactly. So that, tells me, that tells me, oh, ooh, I'm not remembering their name. That means I'm really not their friend and I need to step it up because in other words, in order to make friends, I need to show myself friendly. So my, my un remembering their name is huge. When I go to a restaurant, I want to call that person by name. It makes them feel sure. important and special. And if you remember a friend's name, they love to hear their name. I don't know what they it is, but they do. Right. But I made us some name tags, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yep. Yep. Got and that now, name on it. So now I'm going to stick my name so people can call me by name because truly I think everybody should wear a name tag, no matter in the world, the whole exactly. world should wear a name tag because names are so yeah. important. They Look really how many is. names God has. Your name is your reputation. It follows you. And some people, they can hear your name, Carol Love. Oh my God, that girl, that woman, you know, or Carol, oh, she's so this, she's so that. Oh, they may hear Linda Lang. Oh my goodness, that woman. Or Linda Lang, oh, she's awesome. She's creative. She's this. What are people saying about us? And what are we saying about others? Right, right. And, and you know, it does it does come back on us. That's why we have to be real um, serious about what we say. Because right. if we say one little thing like, oh, you know, remember when, you know, you know um, oh. there are somebody else is going to be saying the same thing about you. So exactly. that's why, like you said, let bygones be bygones. That's it. Forgive daily. The Bible says to forgive daily. Mm -hmm. Even and, and talking to somebody here that's married to somebody that you got to forgive every day. Oh my God! Get on your nerves. <laughs> but that forgiveness is showing love and showing friendship, and God's going to honor that, and He's going to do some amazing yes. work in your life if that happens. Yes. 
Hey, Linda, you know, isn't it a tragedy, though, when marriages lose their friendship? Oh, God. When, when, mar when married couples are no longer friends, that they're enemies? Mm -hmm. that, that because hurts. you know that love can automatically turn to hate. Yes. Uh -oh, what's that song? It's a thin line between love and hate. Mm -hmm. A thin line. So it, that tells me it doesn't take much to cross over to the okay, hate so side. It, you you, you yeah. just reminded me of 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 um who was it the one that uh, I I'm sorry with the names you probably know where she, uh, uh, Tam, Tamara or whatever her name was when the the brother wanted to be with her and he coaxed her into her his room he loved her with all his heart and and so he forced Oh, uh, David's boy. David mm -hmm. David's daughter. Uh, uh, David's Tamar and uh, yeah, so, so he forced himself upon her, but because he he really loved her, she goes, no, no, no. Why don't we get permission and then I'll I'll join you in this yeah. union, you know? But he forced himself on her, and you know that love. After he did that, he hated her. Right Turned after in. he did that, he hated her because how quickly the love turned to hate, and this was his own sister. He hated her. It you know, it reminds me of, of our friends that we were talking about earlier. Their love turned to hate. There is yes, no don't hate me. There is no yes. in between people. There's no gray area. There is no, I just don't like them very much. No, you either love them or you hate them. Love them you either or you hate have them. Faith or you have fear. You either have love or you have hate. There is no in between. There is no <laughs> in between. That is so true because it's no, you're right. There is none. It's either one or the other. You're yeah, so all right. the time. So we have a choice. We get to choose daily what that is. Are we going to, yeah. to how do we how do we live in this faith? By believing God, by believing um that He's our friend, by believing that we can trust Him, knowing that mm -hmm. He's in charge of everybody in our life. Yes. That's when I can be a friend without condition. Remember you were talking about love? You wanted to call it, uh, you called it uncommitted love. Uncommitted love. Talk uncommitted. about that for a second. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this was very fascinating. I was talking to one of my male friends and we was talking about love and, and he brought out the point when it's committed in a way, we seem to be locked in. We feel like we're bound, we're chained. But when it's uncommitted, you have that freedom, you know, because you have that, you know, I don't have to do this. I want to do this because it's the uncommitted thing. I'm unchained and I can just be free to love you and to be your friend at all times, not just on Mother's Day, birthdays, anniversaries, you know, stuff like that. Uncommitted love, it, it has no chains to it. It's unbound. So you're free to love. You're free to make a mistake. You're free to say whatever you want because there's no, yes. there's no um, uh, commitment to where you have to prove yourself or be okay. You exactly. Can be, you. Yeah, be you. And then we found out that when you're like that, nobody's getting angry because you now have an understanding. Hey, it's just uncommitted. That's what love is. Love is going to say what love is going to say. Don't get angry. Yeah, you know no. what? That's the same thing as being having unconditional love. Exactly. Ooh, That's really exactly. what you're saying. It's unconditional. Unconditional. Love. In other words, I don't yeah. have to be perfect. I don't have to wear my hair. I have to put on lipstick. Exactly. I don't have to wear, I don't wear whatever to be proved anything, because I'm going to accept you where you are. It's unconditional. Unconditional. Now that's a friend that can love you like that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, we are out of time. Can you believe oh my it already? Goodness. Oh my goodness. So you want to close with a prayer, please? Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, thank you for bringing Sister Linda and I and the audience to the throne of grace that we was able to hear this great message on friendship. And Lord, out of all, we are your friends. So we love you. Bless everyone that heard this message, see this message, that if there is any friendships out there that need to be restored, that they will be. Just give it time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's all about timing, right?
It's all about timing. My friend, my friend. Okay, <laughs> hey, well, you have a fantastic week. And everybody out there, you guys have a fantastic week as well. And God bless you guys. Bye. God bless.